Hey everybody and good Thursday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here with the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. Weather for Weather Geeks, we're almost halfway through the month of August. We'll do a little halftime report coming up Friday evening, but uh, in the meantime, still wanted to clean up a little bit of uh, continuing business in the weather department uh, here in northern Ohio, at least over the last couple of days. We've added two tornadoes. Uh, to the yearly uh, count in the state of Ohio. The first one we talked about last evening, that was in eastern Geauga County around 8.45 p.m. Tuesday evening. Early Wednesday morning, there was actually another tornado, this one southwest of the city of Cleveland. Uh, this occurred around 2 a.m. Wednesday morning as a line of showers and storms pushed through the region. That brings, that was an EF1, by the way. That was, that was a little bit stronger than that Geauga County tornado. That brings our uh, total, our preliminary total for the state of Ohio up to 27 for the year. Now in 2024, for the entire year, we had 69 tornadoes. So we're behind last year's pace. But this number is still above the long-term average for our state. Pennsylvania, by the way, has had 22 prelimi prelimi preliminarily speaking uh, tornadoes so far in 2025. Look at Illinois, 132. Only Texas has had more tornadoes uh, so far in the year 2025 than Illinois. All right, uh, so after we recorded Weather Geeks last evening, it just kept on raining, especially in Mahoning County. We had problems with uh, some localized flooding. It got particularly bad around the Austin Town area, heading up towards... Uh, Mineral Ridge and Girard, some radar estimates here of up to four inches. We had a couple of rain gauge pictures sent to us. Uh, one in particular, I believe, is a five-inch rain gauge that was pretty much filled to the brim. Um, that was, I believe, in Mineral Ridge. Um, so this uh, rain really meant some business. The Weather Service had to issue a flash flood warning for a time after we did our Weather Geek Studio last evening. That uh, warning was... Uh, for a lot of the northern part of uh, Mahoning and the s extreme southern part of Trumbull County. So, yeah, quite a bit of rain. Too much of a good thing. We needed the rain, of course, but didn't want all that at one time. Today being Thursday, we did get an update from the U.S. Drought Monitor today, and they added an area of abnormally dry, uh, that designation, uh, in a lot of Columbiana County, down into Beaver County, PA. Now, I mentioned this last week on Weather for Weather Geeks. This product is issued on Thursdays, but the data that goes into the product is collected on Mondays. So this really reflects what uh, what this you know uh, situation was a few days ago, not counting the rains that have fallen over the last couple of days. I find that also the U.S. Drought Monitor uh, product here tends to be a little bit on the conservative side. It's pretty darn dry in a lot more areas than just this highlighted area in yellow. Um, so you know I don't see a particularly wet pattern going forward over the next week. We'll have a few chances for showers and storms, but it wouldn't surprise me if the abnormally dry designation was expanded further next Thursday. Uh, we'll, we'll be sure and talk about that here on Weather for Weather Geeks. Sorry, quick detour down to the uh, tropics. Um, you know, Tropical Storm Aaron is looking healthier and it's on its way to becoming a hurricane. This storm has been tracking a little bit farther south than previous forecasts. You know, all the previous forecasts are these black lines right here. This is the actual track right here, and this is the current forecast in red. And so there's been a southward shift. You know, we're still not expecting a landfall across the Leeward Islands, uh, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico, probably not the Bahamas either, but those island chains will probably get a few more impacts than previously thought, at least some rough surf and some rip currents and things like that. I also think the beaches of the southeastern U.S. have a chance, uh, not at a landfall, but at seeing some rough surf and rip currents next week. This is a ways off because Aaron's still pretty far out there, but... Uh, we're on the verge of becoming a hurricane, I think, here in the next uh, 12 to 18 hours or so. Right now, sustained winds are up to 60 with gusts of around 70. The pressure has dropped under 1,000 millibars, and Aaron may even become a Category 3 hurricane as it most likely passes northeast of the uh, Bahamas. You know, when we try to figure out where hurricanes are going to go, in general, uh, in the Atlantic Basin especially, track forecasts have gotten quite good in the last several years. The intensity forecasts, have lagged behind in how much they've improved in recent uh, years and decades. But certainly over the last several years and going back even a couple of decades, the track forecasts have improved pretty considerably. And we like to see when we look at our, you know, we call this the spaghetti plot. It looks like a bowl of spaghetti, right? It's all, all sorts of different tropical models all shown at one time here. Our confidence increases when you see the spaghetti plot, when you see those strands tight together. There's always going to be some weird outliers like this guy down here. What's it doing? Couple way out here, but you can clearly see this is the the majority of the tropical models do something like this, turning it away from the U.S. next week. So uh, we're pretty confident that that is going to be the ultimate destination for Aaron. Back here at home, just nothing to show you on Futurecast next few days. Lots of sunshine, a few bubbling fair weather clouds on Friday. 
few bubbling cirrus and fair weather clouds, cumulus clouds on Saturday. Might there be a shower or a thunderstorm on Sunday? Yes, because a weak front is going to push through. It's most likely going to be in the midday and afternoon if we were to see that, but this model even has a shower or a thunderstorm pushing through in the morning. I can't discount that possibility yet. I don't think Sunday is any sort of a rainy day or a washout, but uh, it is the one day this weekend that we have a chance anyway of picking up a shower or a thunderstorm. Now, it is going to be a hot weekend, and I, you know, I mentioned this on social media earlier. You know, summer's kind of getting into wind-down mode for a lot of people, especially people with kids. You know, school's starting to ramp up uh, if it hasn't started in your district yet. It's going to be starting over the next couple of weeks. And if you own a pool, if you belong to a pool, you know, the number of days and weekends even that you can spend at the pool typically starts, you know, dwindling pretty fast as we get deeper into August and certainly towards September. So this may be the last really good pool weekend for some folks of the season. Great pool weather, especially on Saturday. Humidity, not much of a story. The dew points are going to be mostly lower 60s, upper 50s on Saturday, but the temperature will approach 90. And again, I think we're dry Saturday into Saturday night. Could be a shower or storm Sunday, but if you have outdoor plans on Sunday, I certainly would not cancel them at this point, even though there might be a passing shower or a thunderstorm. Now, the humidity that comes back up Saturday night into Sunday, that elevated humidity, those higher dew points are going to stick around for a few days into next week. But, you know, I, I talked about this some earlier this week. A lot of times when a tropical system does kind of a recurve, this is Aaron, of course, over here. When it does one of these numbers and goes back out into the open Atlantic, Usually something like that draws in drier Canadian air in its wake. And I think that's probably going to transpire second half of next week. So right around uh, next around this time next week, next Wednesday, th especially Thursday into Friday, into the following weekend, I expect uh, dew points to be on the comfortable side. And uh, Aaron at that point is far, far out to sea. I think the last 10 days of August will not be particularly hot nor humid the vast majority of the uh, time. So we're going to flirt with 90 this weekend for perhaps the final time in August. Uh, you know, as I've been talking about this week, I don't want to discount the possibility of some 90s in September. My gut feeling is that September is going to be a hotter than average month this year. Sometimes September is like that. It, sometimes September is like a continuation of summer, much like March on the other side of the calendar. A lot of times March is just a continuation of the winter season. It's like February part two. September is sometimes August part two, and I kind of kind of suspect this is going to be one of those years. In the meantime, thanks for watching this Thursday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll meet you back here on Friday for a, an August halftime report, a look ahead at the second half of the month, and an update on that weekend forecast. Hope to see you then.